thank you for giving me this opportunity ajay and uh, ladies and gentlemen on december 1st 2022 when india assumed the mantle of g20 um g20's presidency honorable prime minister wrote and let me quote his words can the g20 go further still can we catalyze a fundamental mindset shift to benefit humanity as a whole unquote throughout this presidency year this call from the prime minister was the clarion call for india's g20 presidency concerted efforts were taken to mainstream the concerns and aspirations of the global south to explore how technology can be leveraged for the benefit of develop for the benefit of all and for the development of all and to develop solutions for enabling multilateral institutions to become more effective in addressing the complex development financing landscape of the 21st century the g20 new delhi leaders declaration unanimously agreed to by all g20 countries addresses some of the pressing challenges confronting the global economy and also provides a policy guidance for a future built on people focused principles and trust based partnerships as ajay mentioned even though by the end of this month our role as g20 presidency comes to an end momentum must be maintained on the policy guidance of the new delhi leaders declaration not only should we engage in g20 partners to take forward the outcomes but we should also explore how best we can integrate these outcomes into india's domestic policy making process so that we can lead by example let me now move on to the theme for today's seminar and share a few perspectives on how new delhi leaders declaration has envisaged a strong sustainable balanced and inclusive growth which is a cornerstone of the g20's mandate Since the pandemic the global economy has been grappling with multiple crises adversely affecting global growth while the recovery is underway it remains slow and uneven the current pace of global growth remains quite weak well below the 3.8% average in the last two de- decades before the pandemic and looking ahead over the medium term growth prospects have weakened further policy coordination both global as well as domestic is critical to ensure that growth comes back on track and remains strong it should remain strong and sustainable balanced and inclusive to this effect the new delhi leaders declaration underscores the urgency of implementing well calibrated macroeconomic and structural policies to bolster equitable growth and enhance macroeconomic and financial stability under the theme of strong sustainable balanced and inclusive growth the declaration focuses on trade the future work and financial inclusion i suppose those are the panels that are going to be discussing on the topics all three are pivotal for stimulating global growth i am sure that the ensuing panel discussion will elicit valuable perspectives and insights under our presidency the g20 placed close attention to integrating msmes into international trade msmes account for 90% of businesses 60 to 70% of employment and 50% of gdp worldwide they play a key role in sustaining livelihood in particular among the working poor women youth and also groups in vulnerable situations however the msmes particularly in developing nations often struggle with limited access to information hindering their international trade involvement to help address this challenge the new new delhi leaders declaration welcome the jaipur call for action 
which aims at promoting the MSME sector as well as bridging information gaps for MSMEs to help them expand in their business and trade. While presenting 2023 Union Budget, I had noted that the MSMEs are the growth engines for the Indian economy. India can definitely lead the way in ensuring that the actions set out in the Jaipur call for action continue to be, taking, uh, to be taken forward through the G20 and the WTO so that the full potential of MSMEs can be fully exploited. The role of technology as a tool for social transformation and economic empowerment has, was a subject of uh, discussion in the G20 under India's presidency. This has become most evident in the financial inclusion landscape. The leader's declaration provides concrete policy guidance on leveraging the benefits and minimizing the downsides arising from the impact of technology and development. Digital public infrastructure and the manner in which it has revolutionized the Indian financial inclusion landscape has been lauded globally. India has been at the forefront of this revolution and India's own growth story has gained significant momentum through digital public infrastructure. DPIs also play a crucial part in G2P payments, ensuring targeted transparent payments and promoting the inclusion of vulnerable groups such as women, students and the elderly. With over 50 crore Jandan bank accounts opened and a monthly transaction volume of over 10 billion through UPI, India's example vividly illustrates how DPIs have enhanced not just access, but also the usage and quality of financial inclusion. Drawing inspiration from India's successful implementation of India Stack, the G20 policy recommendations for advancing financial inclusion uh, through the DPI was endorsed in the leader's declaration. These recommendations provide guidance on developing well-structured DPIs, establishing risk-managed regulatory frameworks, promoting strong governance, and ensuring that DPIs serve everyone. DPI is also embedded within the G20 New Financial Inclusion Action Plan for 24-26, for two years that is. With India now on the co-chair of the Global Particip Partnership for Financial Inclusion, which is tasked with the implementation of the action plan, we will have a key, key role in building on the foundational work done during our presidential year. The New Delhi Leaders Declaration recognizes that well-integrated and adequately skilled workers benefit origin and destination countries alike. It also emphasizes the importance of addressing skill gaps globally and provides a comprehensive policy guidance on this respect. G20 policy priorities for addressing skill gaps globally, facilitating cross-country comparability and mutual recognition of skills, qualifications, and comprehensive toolkits for upskilling and reskilling are areas that the leader's declaration has addressed. So ladies and gentlemen, I opened my remark quoting Honorable Prime Minister's vision for G20 as I reflect on a on the last one year, I believe we have delivered a G20 presidency that has provided clear policy direction for addressing the needs of the majority of the global population, whose voices are often unheard in global multilateral forums. However, we still have work left to do. I look forward to valuable perspectives from today's discussions. Which, we can, which can contribute to our preparations for the upcoming virtual G20 summit. These insights will also help us to carry forward the vision of the New Delhi Leaders Declaration in collaboration with succeeding G20 presidencies. I extend my best wishes for a successful seminar. Thank you very much.